Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about discrete joint probability distributions. We will start with an example, something you can relate to, hopefully. And then we will formally define what a joint distribution of two discrete random variables is. We will follow that by with, an, with another example, then give you an exercise for you to work on so you can practice and get good at this. Let's say we have two random variables, x and y. The random variable x takes a value of zero if a patient is not infected with a specific virus. It's not infected. And it takes a value of one if a patient is actually infected with a specific virus. Now you go to a diagnostic test center, and then they do a test. The random variable y takes a value of zero if the diagnostic test is negative. That is, for that specific virus, if the test comes back negative, the random variable y takes a value of zero. Otherwise, if the test, the diagnostic test comes back positive, the random variable y takes a value of one. This table that you see here actually represents the joint distribution of these two random variables, each of them taking a value of zero or one. The probability that a patient is not infected with the virus and the test also results in a negative result is 0 0.8750. We write that probability 0 0.8750 is the probability that x takes a value of zero. And so we represent by that comma there, comma y takes a value of zero. And that is equal to 0 0.8750. Circle another value here. This probability, 0 0.0233, is the probability that a patient is not infected, is actually not infected, that is x is zero, but the test result the diagnostic test is positive. That is a misdiagnosis and y is equal to one. And that probability is given by 0 0.0233. So this table that you see right here represents all the four possible pro values that these two random variables can take. So, all right, let's look at another probability. The probability that a patient is in fact infected with the virus, but the test result, the diagnostic test, is negative, that is zero, is 0 0.0055. And that is also a misdiagnosis by the test. And finally, x takes a value of one and y takes a value of one, meaning that the patient is infected with the virus and the test result is also confirming that infection, a positive test result. That has a probability of 0 0.0963. So this table is the joint probability mass function, joint PMF of these two discrete random variables. Let's formally define the joint probability mass function of the random variables x and y, or the random vector z, which is x and y, all right? The joint probability mass function is the probable is, is denoted by P subscript X comma Y, capital X comma Y. The capital letters are the representing the random variables X and Y. And the small, the little X and Y representing observed values of these random variables, X, capital X, and capital Y. An example is the probability that X takes a value of little X equals one and y takes the value of little y equals zero. And this joint probability mass function must satisfy that this probability, each of the entries in the, in the table that we share, we show, that I showed you in a, a few minutes ago, each of these probabilities must be between zero and one. Each of these joint probabilities must be between zero and one. And, and the sum of them should equal one. So in this example, if you sum these values, 0 0.8750 plus 0 0.2, 0 0.0233 plus 0 0.0055, 0 0.0963, they should sum to 1.0. That's what this second condition 
the same. And if, if we sum the probabilities, each of these joint probabilities over all values of the support, we should get a value of one. Let's look at another example. So in this example, we have uh, an industrial heavy construction equipment store that either sells zero items, one item, two items, or three items per day in a given day. So let's say this random variable x, this is the random variable x that denotes the number of heavy construction equipment sold per day. For each of the construction equipment sold, the store also tries to sell extended warranties. So they could succeed in selling one equipment per day. And for that equipment, they could sell a warranty. And that probability is given by that 0.1866. You notice that, you know, if they do not sell any equipment, they cannot sell any additional warranty in a given day. So these probabilities are zero, you see? The same thing. If they sell only one equipment per day, okay, the probability that they really sell two or three warranties per day is zero because they can only sell warranties for the equipments they sold. Let's say the random variable Y is the number of extended warranties sold per day. We already defined X to be the number of heavy construction equipment sold per day. And the random variable Y is the number of extended warranties sold per day. The question is, what is the probability that one heavy equipment and no warranties are sold in a day? So that is the probability that the number of heavy equipment sold is capital X, the random variable X equals one, and comma, what's the probability that the random variable X equals one, comma, and the random variable Y, that is the number of extended warranties is sold is none or zero. If we read from this table, the number of construction equipment is one, and, and the number of extended warranties sold is zero. So that is the probability, that's the joint probability here, 0.0397. Seven. Again, this table represents the joint probability mass function of these two random variables, x and y. You notice that each of these probabilities are between zero and one, and you can check. So if, we, if you sum each of these probabilities, each of these joint probabilities, you should get a value of one. What we have done so far is we introduced the joint probability mass function of two random variables, X and Y. We give you an example, we defined it formally, and then we give you another example. Let me give you an exercise that will lead us into what we will discuss in the next video, or maybe two exercises. Continuing from the previous example, now let's ask, what is the probability that at most two heavy equipment and at most one warranties are sold in a given day, given the probability mass function that we just looked at right here? I will leave the answer in the notes section. I will also leave you with another exercise. In 2019, 55,703 graduate students graduated with a PhD degree from the United States. And when you earn your PhD in the United States, the National Science Foundation asks you to fill out a survey. And these are some of the questions that they have on the survey. So in this table, I have the joint probability mass function of two random variables. What is the primary source of the financial support for your PhD study? Say that's random variable X, or you can name it whatever you want. And the second random variable is, are you a US citizen? So for those graduates of PhD degrees in the USA in 2019, I've got a couple of questions. Question one, what is the probability that a non-US citizen funded their study through their own resources? So you can calculate that using this joint distribution function of those two random variables. The next two examples are, what is the probability, the next two exercises are, what is the probability that a, a doctoral graduate student had a fellowship, scholarship, or a dissertation grant as a source of funding? And then the next question is, what is the probability that a 2019 US doctoral graduate was not a US citizen? Okay, 